In today's show, we're going to look ahead to the 11 games for Saturday, including streaming options if you've got any roster spots. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode of Locked On Fantasy Basketball is also brought to you by McDonald's. Proudly serving communities since 1965, McDonald's has always been more than a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's a place where friends and family can come together Big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. Thank you for also making the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. So what we're here to do is look ahead to Saturday's action. First game up is the Celtics and the Wizards. Al Horford, as you would have seen on the uh, Top Players in Fantasy Basketball video that I did, he is the number one... That's not true. He's the number one Celtic in a lot of formats. He's like a top 20 player this season. Can he keep it going? I would doubt it. His rebounds, his free throws, his um, blocks are through the roof. He's putting up massive, massive numbers. So let's keep an eye on that. Or well, Jalen Brown has been struggling a little bit. JB, you've done it again. First game was excellent from Jalen Brown. And then um, he's been really up and down. I wonder if his knee, how much, or how much his knee is bothering him, um, how much or how he responds to Ime Yudoka sort of calling him out post-game last time. That'll, that'll be one to watch. Well, for the Wizards, we don't expect Rui Hachimura to be playing again in this game. Um, so Kyle Kuzma, who you know, is putting up some okay numbers, still not a top 100 fantasy guy though. Can he start to do things that make me feel confident about him remaining a must-roster 12-team league guy? Because I'm not confident in that. With Daniel Gafford out, Montrez Harrell has been dominating. He's putting up huge numbers. It is a good sell-high opportunity if you can. He's playing like you know, gigantic minutes that he won't get when Gafford returns, but he has been playing at a super high level. So just paying attention to how he can put that together and whether you can translate that into a good fantasy uh, trade scenario. The Magic and the Pistons. It's a back-to-back for Orlando. Cole Anthony was red hot again against Tor- Toronto. He's putting up some really, really big numbers. He looked completely lost in Summer League and even in preseason, I wouldn't, didn't think he was great. He's been awesome in the regular season. He is a must-roster player, and let's watch him there. Well, Jalen Suggs, I thought, looked better against the Raptors. Let's see if he can back that up against an opponent who's obviously not playing at a particularly high level, the Detroit Pistons. But onto the Pistons, I reckon we might get Cade Cunningham. He's off the injury report, so all eyes are going to be on watching Cade and how he looks in his, hopefully, first NBA game. While we look at uh, Alf Stewart, is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. He's been annoying, or his coach has been annoying. The limited minutes, the production's been off. Hopefully, we can get a big one from him going against the Orlando Magic. The Knicks and the Pelicans. Kemba Walker's put together two really big games in a row. Let's hope that that is the impetus he needs to keep that production going after it looked pretty rough to begin the year. Let's see how he goes there. While Mitchie Robinson has uh, been off. Mitch Robinson says, I'll take it from here. Unfortunately, he hasn't been taking it from here. He's playing okay minutes, but the production is just like, it's just shit. I think he's a must hold. In points leagues, I don't think he is a hold, to be fair. In category leagues, I would hold him, but get something going. For the Pelicans, I'm going to put Brandon Ingram's name here, but really, like, he just is one of the most ultra-consistent players there is. He's going to give you like that 26 and 4, maybe a steal two threes, solid percentages. Like he's just, there's nothing up or nothing down, but let's just see how he goes. I'll be more interested to see what happens to him when Zion does eventually return. And then Kyra Lewis, who I had big hopes of coming into the draft. Um, He hasn't looked like that player. He's thrown a few flashes so far this season, but not enough. He has taken over from Thomas Sadoransky as the backup point guard. So that's a tick in his direction. He's not taking over from Devontae Graham at any point this year, but just to watch him for deeper leagues and for dynasty formats, I think is going to be pretty important. The Hawks and the Sixers, it's been a very lackluster start to the season for DeAndre Hunter. He's moving towards being a 10-team droppable player, if not already there. 
and moving towards being a 12-team droppable player. I, I'm, I, that hot start to last season feels completely anomalous. It felt anomalous when it was happening as he was shooting like 15% better from two and you know, at this gigantic usage, which just didn't make any sense given the team around him and it hasn't happened since. I'd like to see a few more from him, but he's real close to getting dropped. And Clint Capella, he's not close to getting dropped, but he's also performing poorly. The field goal percentage is down. His minutes are down. He's just not producing. He's a massive buy low. I want to see him start to get those minutes up. Well, for the Sixers, Tyrese Maxey looked good against Detroit. Can he keep that momentum rolling? We hope so. Against the Hawks team, that's obviously better than the Pistons. Well, Andre Drummond last game was pretty disappointing. I'm more watching to see if he can continue to produce solid numbers in backup minutes behind Embiid. I have significant doubts about that, but let's see whether he is justified to be uh, to be held onto in those scenarios. Guys, we thank McDonald's for sponsoring today's podcast. You all have these great memories of Maccas throughout your whole... We call it Maccas here. I know you guys call it Mickey D's. Um, you have these memories of McDonald's, going to your birthday parties when you're in school, taking your own kids there. After sport performances, hey, if you, you guys win the game, cheeseburgers on us and the whole team goes back there. Or you go and use their reliable Wi-Fi. And, and just, we all have these memories of McDonald's. It's a place that not only is there for tasty and affordable food, it's a place where people can come together. So why don't you head to your local McDonald's to refuel and reconnect? ba da ba 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 I am loving it. All right, the Raptors and the Pacers. Um... I don't have his name listed here, but Scotty Barnes has been incredible. Like, he's been awesome. Yes. You know what, guys? I hated the pick at pick number four. I watched all their tape in college. I was really worried about how the hell he was going to be able to do anything offensively with his shot. He's been great. He's been awesome. Would I change my opinion on picking him at four over uh, Suggs now? I'm not quite there, but I'm pretty bloody close. He's looked awesome. He's clearly a must-roster player and continues to... Look, it's some. I feel like it's something... I just keep looking at it and go, how does he keep shooting 60% from the field? He's not taking any threes. They're not going in either, 25%. He's not even getting the assists, which I thought would be the only category he'd really you know, thrive at. He's scoring and he's doing it with solid usage. Even his free throws are much improved. He's just been awesome. So I really want to see him. He's a great kid. I love the kid. My issue was I just didn't think he was the right pick at number four. Nothing to do with me hating him or you know thinking he was trash or anything like that. I, just, I think I had him, what, at eight maybe in the draft? But he's clearly higher than that. I want to watch Gary Trent Jr. who had a big play uh, to win that game against the Magics. Uh, Magics, Jesus. Against the Magic with that nice steal. Yeah, watching him to see him produce in other areas is important. And then also the Jedi, OG Ananobi. But what about Scarves? OG. Blizzard, stop, ones. OG. Uh, you better stop, OG. Ananobi has been really good after a slow start. He wasn't that good against Orlando, but he was pretty good there. And just watching him, can he push to a top 25 player? That's the hope. For the Pacers, Demontis Sabonis. I'm always just wanting to watch how he fares on this team now without Malcolm Brogdon, with that new coach. Again, the last few games for him have been, I, I would say, somewhat disappointing. The numbers haven't been quite where they were earlier on. He's still getting defensive stats at a higher level than you would anticipate, which is encouraging. But watching him is important. And then TJ McConnell, who did start for, um, what's his name, Brogdon. He'll start again. He didn't do huge amounts in that game against the Nets. He is a must-roster player for now, but he won't be uh, moving forward once Brogo is back. The Spurs and the Bucks. it's been really bad for Calden Johnson the last two games. You know of my skepticism of him. Must hold 12-team points league. Uh, not a must roster 12-team category league guy. But can he start to do anything? But more importantly, will Pop trust him to play him more than 27 minutes in a situation where Doug McDermott's out? Because he's barely been playing the last two games. And then also Lonnie Walker the fourth, who's been playing really, really solidly. Easily the best stretch of basketball of his career. Scoring well, shooting well, adding some assists here and there. He's got some stream value for 12-team as well. For the Bucks. Grayson Allen is a nice fringy 12 e guy. Like he's not a, a must roster by any stretch, but he is a nice guy while Drew Holiday's out. And I also want to see if Bobby Portis can produce more than he did in his first game. Like obviously he was limited in that first game, but let's see if we can get a little bit more out of Punch Bob. The Jazz and the Bulls. I've got Mike Conley um, here, but Conley is not going to play. So more importantly, I want to watch Conley's um, replacement. It'll probably be Joe Ingles with Donovan Mitchell starting, but that means there is a 25-minute, 30-minute-a-night role available. Who does it go to? I would have to assume it goes to Jared Butler. So I want to watch how they replace Mike Conley. 
Clarkson gets a boost, Ingles gets a boost, but Butler is the most important one to me to watch. And then Ingles should get yeah, really excellent stream value while Conley's resting on this back-to-back. For the Bulls, the news, of course, Patrick Williams is out for the season. Alex Caruso becomes a must-roster player. I think they'll start Javante Green. He's not a 12-team league must-add player. I'd look at him in like 14 to 16 teamers. And in those deeper leagues, you can look at like an Alizé Johnson, perhaps. Yeah, I'm not super confident of that. Javante is going to be the big boost, and then Caruso is going to play 30-plus minutes a night. So watching how those two go with the absence of Patrick Williams will be interesting. The Heat and the Grizzlies, Bam Adebayo. Can you get some assists? Maybe do something. That'd be great. Like his defensive stats aren't great. His assists are way down. His usage is awesome, but I want to see those other things. And also I want to watch Tyler Hero, who is playing at a sensationally high level at the moment. Um, not whether he can continue it because there's no reason really that he can't keep up at a, at a solid enough level, but just watching him play and how they're using him and what his usage looks like. Well, for the Grizzlies, Ja Morant has been electric. He's been almost the most watchable, probably, probably has been the most watchable player in the entire NBA this season. Um, watching his percentages, which are, as I detailed earlier on the show today, they're like you know, 10 percentage points higher in all three categories. And then Kyle Anderson, who is a, a questionable heading into this game. He closed the game and played overtime ahead of Steven Adams, and they put Jack- Jackson to the four. If they will continue to give him 30 minutes, then he moves back into 12-team league value. But maybe it was just that one game. So let's watch that. For the Thunder and the Warriors, Joshy Giddy, that's always the one I want to watch. He's a must-roster player. He's looked awesome the last two games, maybe three games. The passing is really strong, and he's impressing a little bit more with his offense and his scoring. While Darius Baisley's had some shit ones, but really, really good in that matchup against the Lakers. I'd like to see Baisley do it for four or five in a row before I get convinced that he's turned the corner, but it is an opportunity for us to watch that here. Well, for the Warriors, I want to watch the Jordan Poole Damian Lee battle. Poole played more minutes than Lee most games, but not the last one. Lee closed, and Lee's playing well. He's scoring in double digits every single game. So if you are looking for a scoring boost in like a 14-team or even a 12-team stream scenario, Lee can be there for you. Poole I am still holding, but it's looking like he will become a drop at some point, especially when Clay eventually returns. The Nuggets and the Timberwolves. I want to watch Maga Porter Jr. This is a back-to-back for the Nuggets. Um, Hopefully Porter can... I'm recording this before they play on Friday. Hopefully, Porter is able to um, get some form going. But I also want to see if the old big stiffy, Bones Highland, can get in there. I hope we see Highland play. I hope Malone is not just talking shit yet again. But I want to see Porter turn it around. I want to see Boner get in there as well. Well, for the Wolves, are we going to see that starting alignment of um, Jared Vanderbilt next to uh, uh, Jaden McDaniels? Vanderbilt can be an excellent rebound streamer. Well, D'Angelo Russell was good last game as well. Is there any hope of him being able to continue that? The Cavs and the Suns. No Isaac Okoro, so Lowry Markinen minutes will be up. Now, he's been like rough. He's not shooting well. He can shoot well. If we can shoot better, maybe there's a, is a better way of phrasing that. So let's see if he can yeah, push his value into must roster 12. It's not there for me. Well, Rubio is. He's playing at a super high level, Rick. Uh, really good assist numbers, scoring well, playing a lot of minutes. While for the Suns, DeAndre Ayton was solid in the last game, but has been has been underwhelming so far. Let's see what he can do. And also want to watch Mikhail Bridges, who is a guy that, look, look at his two-point percentage. It's like 65%. It's so, so high, and he's continually been really high. I'd like to see him expand his game and get a little bit more usage, but it does feel like it's a little bit hard on this squad. In terms of stream guys for nine cat leagues, Jared Vanderbilt's up there. George Hill, Damian Lee, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, Pat Connaughton, Royce O'Neal, Jay Crowder, Killian Hayes becomes an option. We'll see how he goes next to Cade and Danny Green. And then for deeper formats, we've got Georgie Hill, Damian Lee, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, Jay Crowder, Killian Hayes, Patrick Beverly, Andre Iguodala, Jordan Nwora, and JaVale McGee. While for points leagues, these guys are rostered in 50% or fewer leagues. Jalen Brunson, Bruce Brown, Franz Wagner, Terrence Mann, Dorian Finney-Smith, Nick Batum, Luke Kennard, LaMarcus Aldridge, and Kevin Love. Before we get out of here, just don't forget, guys, the place to place your bets for basketball and football is Bet Online, a new updated website and interface. It looks very, very schmick. So head over there, sign up today using our promo code Locked On, and you receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit from basketball, football, the World Series, NHL, boxing, and UFC. Right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all of the special offers for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet Online is where the game starts. And of course, the best tasting protein bar in the world is Built Bar. Get yourself your Built Bar, whatever your favorite flavor. Cookies and cream, coconut, raspberry, uh, I was going to say apple, but that's not one. Orange, strawberry, 
Um, mint brownie, so many great flavors out there, but they're not just delicious. They also taste great. They're both the same things. They're also healthy. That's what I'm trying to say. 17 to 18 grams of protein, 130 to 180 calories, four to five grams of sugar, and four to five grams of net carbs per bar. Get them for 15% off at built.com by using the promo code LOCKED15. Go to built.com, load your card up with boxes, use that code LOCKED15, and you are done. Guys, we're done here as well. Follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app while here on YouTube. Give it a thumbs up, leave your comments down below, subscribe notification bell, all that stuff, guys. We're done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.